Hello, and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to cover the basics of probability as a lesson, and then continue on with a couple problems uh, which involve practice with probability. All right, what is probability? <clears throat> okay, probability is just a fraction that is between 0 and 1. So it's the number of winners over the number of possible outcomes. All right, so if I roll a die, <clears throat> there's a probability, there's a total number of outcomes that are possible. I have 1 and 1, 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if I say that a winner is 7, then there's a certain number of combinations that will give me a 7. I've got 1 and 6, 2 and 5, 3 and 4. But not all combinations of die are going to be equal to 7. So the probability is going to be between 0 and 1. So the number of winners in that case where I'm rolling for a 7 will be less than the number of possible outcomes. Now if probability is equal, so probability has to be between 0 and 1. And I define it with a big capital letter P. So if probability is 0, that means there's no chance of a winner. So I say, what's the probability of rolling a 15 with a standard die? The probability, there are no winners that are 15. So the probability of that happening is going to be 0. Now, what's the probability of rolling a number between 2 and 12 with a standard set of die? And that probability is going to be 1, because every number that you roll, every combination of numbers that you roll with die, will be between 2 and 12. So in the case where probability is equal to 1, then regardless of what you do, you'll come out a winner. So the number of winners is equal to the number of possible outcomes. Right, so how do we, at least at this stage, how do we determine what probability is? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of possibilities, and then we're going to count the number of winners. Now, there is more advanced determination of probability, which we won't get into, but just the basics is let's count the possibilities, count the winners, and then we'll figure out what the probability is. Okay, so let's take on some practice. All right. Uh, number 14a, what is the probability? I have five points that are all laid out, uh, and we can assume that C, D, and E are on the same line. Uh, so what is the probability that two points are collinear? Well, this is somewhat of a trick question, because if I have two points, they're always going to be on a given line, right? So between C and A, there is a line. Between uh, A and D, there is a line. Between D and E, there is a line. Between uh, B and E, there's a line. Right, so I can construct a line between C and A, uh, between D and A, uh, I know this is not exact, between D and B, uh, and between E and B. Right, so any two points will determine a line. So the probability that two points are collinear is going to be 1. All right. Okay, next question is what is the probability that three points are collinear? All right, so we go back to the lesson and we say, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to count the number of possibilities, then we're going to count the number of winners, then we're going to come to a conclusion. Okay, so the probability that three points are collinear. So what we need to do is count the number of possibilities. So I've done that for you already. I have ABC, ABD, ABE, ACD, ACE, ADE, and so on and so forth. So now what is the probability that three points are collinear? Well, I said it initially that CD and E can assume to be on the same line. So the only uh, set of three points that are going to be collinear are going to be C, D, and E. So the probability would be that I have one winner, right? One winner over ten possibilities. Now I can't draw a line through three other points other than C, D, and E. Just not going to work. Okay. So list the number of possibilities that's the denominator, number of winners on top. 1 out of 10, or I'm going to say 0.1 is the probability that I'll get three points that are collinear. And the last part of this question, if four points are selected at ran random, what is the probability that they are collinear? Well, I can see that no four points are going to be collinear. C, D, and E, the three points are collinear. But C, D, and A, C, D, E, and A are not collinear. C, D, E, and B are not collinear. A, B, D, and E are not collinear. So the probability that any four points will be collinear is going to be 0. So p in this case is equal to 0. 
Okay, next question. And there are two parts to this question. If a point in a rectangle ABCD, so that's the larger diagram, larger part of the diagram, is selected at random, what is the probability that it is in the square SQUA? All right, so the first thing we need to do is determine uh, the possibilities, right, and that's going to be our, um, our denominator, and then we'll consider the winners. So the possibilities is everything or all points, or basically the area inside rectangle ABCD. So the area is going to be 9 times 5, or 45. So I know that BS is 2, and I know that QU is 3. I know that SQUA is a square, so SA must also be 3. So BS2 plus SA, which is 3, is going to equal 5. So I know that the area of ABCD will be 45. So those, in terms of the area, we'll consider that the number of possibilities. The number of winners is going to be anything inside SQUA. I know it's a square, so all sides are congruent. Um, I have one side here, it's three units, so I know that the other side is going to be three. I multiply them together, I have nine over 45. Or I can say one over five to simplify this. I can say the probability is equal to 0.2. All right, so the next question is, what is the probability that is not in SQUA? So that means everything else outside of SQUA, right? So all of this. Well, I know it's going to be 4 fifths, right? Because 1 fifth, the, the square is 1 fifth of the entire rectangle. The balance of the rectangle, the part in green which I'm drawing, is going to be 4 fifths. So the probability that it is not an SQUA will be 4 fifths or 0.8. So now we'll continue on with more, another probability question that comes from the chapter review. And that question is, what is the probability of selecting two B-level problems? So I know there's a lot on the screen, so let me explain what I have here. In blue, I have two problems that are C-level problems. We'll say those are the hardest. I have five problems that are B-level problems. Those are going to be the medium-level problems. And one problem that is an A-level problem that's going to be the easiest. So I start by creating a combination of all of the possible choices. And I list those out. C1, B1, C1, B2, C1, B3. So I'm listing all of the possibilities. And as I go through that, I count in red how many different possibilities there are. So you can see in the top, B5, A1, that's 1. B4, B5, B4, A1, that's 2. So I count everything in red. I have 6 up here on the right-hand side, and then 13 and 9, 22. So I have a possible outcomes or possible combinations of the two problems of 28. Now I want to figure out which of those 28 <clears throat> are B-level problems. So now I have to go through the, um, the choices that I have that I've listed out and identify how many of them are uh, two B-level problems. Well, I have two B-level problems here, two here, I have two here, and do I have any other combinations? Yes, I have two here. Two here, two here, two here, two here, two here, two here. I don't have two here, so let me just reverse that out. All right, so now I count the number of winners. I have the number of possibilities of 28. Number of winners are the ones in green. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I know I have 10 winners out of 28 possibilities, which is the same as 5 fourteenths if I simplify, or my probability is approximately 0.36.